What's up guys, how's it going? It is Matt here. So this video is gonna be about tips for people who want to carry a full-size pistol concealed. This is the people who either want to or are forced to by say, department policies. There's a lot of police officers out there that when they're off duty, they have to carry their full-size pistol. So this is going to be a tip for you guys for when it comes to concealed carrying a full-size pistol. Now, most people who watch this channel know that there's going to be three types of pistols. There's full-size, compact, and subcompact. Full-size, it's got a full-length slide. Hold on. My MNP here. Full-size pistol, it's got a full slide, and it's got a full pistol grip. Usually the slide's going to be over four, four inches or over for full-size, and if it's going to be a compact, it's going to be about a three-inch slide, and a subcompact, even smaller than that, all right? A uh, full size, you can see I have a good amount of space here between my pinky and the magazine. Whereas a compact, it would come right up to my pinky. And a subcompact, my pinky would kind of be hanging off into the wind, all right? So that's the basic of telling the difference. But most of you people watching this channel probably already know that. But anyway, so let's get into the tips. So first, I'm going to start with my history of carrying a pistol and where, why, how I learned to do this, all right? So... When I was in the Marine Corps, there was three types of pistols, all right? There was a Beretta, a Glock, and a 1911, all right? That's the only type of pistols that you're really familiar with, all right? So you have those three types of pistols. So when you get, when I got out of the Marine Corps, I decided to stick with a full-size pistol, all right? Because that is all I really knew about. That's all I ever carried. That's all I was ever familiar with was a full-size pistol. Then through the years, I learned of carrying that and switching over to a Glock 22 and carrying that and then my M&P, which I'm actually carrying now and carrying that, that full-size pistols are pretty freaking hard to conceal, all right? It can be done, don't get me wrong, it can be done, but it is pretty comp it's pretty hard to conceal carry a full-size pistol. The main reasons behind it is compared to a compact pistol is this pistol grip like I said before, it's a little bit longer. So when it's on your body, it's going to stick out of your shirt. If you're carrying a strong side, it'll be sticking out of your shirt a little bit like that. Or if it's back behind you, it'll be sticking out a little bit far. Whereas a compact, even like taking an inch off or a couple centimeters off will do a big difference. All right, it'll make a big difference. Whereas a subcompact, you can shove the thing in your pocket and no one will even notice it, all right? So inches count when it comes to concealment. But this video is for the people who are specifically going to be carrying a full-size pistol. Tip number one that I have for you guys, get a good belt, all right? This goes for carrying any type of pistol. You need a heavy-duty belt that can support the weight of a pistol. Full-size pistols are heavier than compacts or subcompacts, all right? So you are going to need a belt that can hold the weight so you're not taking the belt and cranking it as high as you can just so your pants don't fall down, all right? And when you crank it that tight, you're, the whole day you're gonna be talking high pitch because you're gonna be so uncomfortable and you'll be squished, all right? So you're going to want a good belt, a heavy duty belt. Now I'm not saying go out and get yourself a gun belt. You can, definitely, you can go out and get yourself a gun belt. There's good gun belts out there between 50 to over a couple hundred dollars, I'm, I'm not joking. And they usually have like either metal lined on the inside or some type of material, heavy duty material on the inside. Or you can go the route that I take, which seems to work great for me and regular average average day people with bills to pay and stuff like that. Which is, I went to Home Depot one day, I was actually just getting some supplies, and I noticed in the tool section, there was a heavy duty leather belt. I'll show it to you real quick. This is my work belt, all right? So, I picked it up. It's thicker than your average belt, fatter than your average belt, and it can hold weight. It's designed to hold tools, all right? And it barely fits in the loops of my pants, but it fits in the loops of my pants. So it works just as good as a gun belt. I've had gun belts before. This works just as good as a gun belt. The only difference is this was 10 bucks, whereas a gun belt is 50 to a couple hundred dollars, all right? So that's just a quick little tip I want to put in there. So you want a good belt that can support the weight, all right? The next tip is to get a decent quality holster. Now, there's a lot of different types of holsters you can get out there. A lot of people, when they first start carrying a firearm, they go out and they get themselves like a felt holster, all right? It's very price effective. It's like 10, 20 bucks, but 
it's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be rubbing up against your skin. It's going to rub your skin raw. You're going to get a lot of pimples on it. And, it, and it's not going to be the most comfortable holster. The clips aren't usually great. And in the end, you're probably just going to toss it and say, I hate that holster. I'm going to go with a new one. So I'm going to give you a couple quick options that you can do. All right, so first, just standard. This is a lower end holster, all right? This is a DeSantis holster, all right? This is actually the J-hook. You put the belt on top or whatever. I'm not a huge fan of the J-hook. That's why I'm not wearing it. But this is kind of a lower end holster, all right? It covers the trigger of the pistol. This is specifically designed for my SIG. It covers the trigger of the pistol, all right? So you, there's no trigger exposed, so nothing can ever happen. It's made out of leather, which means it's pretty durable. It'll get the job done. But at the same time, it's not. It, it once it gets sweaty and get kind of starts getting uncomfortable. And like I said, I hate the freaking J-hook. All right, I hate the J-hook. So one of the very first concealed carry, good, t decent quality concealed carry holsters I had that I got and I still have to today is this one. All right, this is a Galco Stow and Go holster. All right, this if I remember was when I got it, it was like thirty, forty dollars when I got it. It was actually specifically designed for my Glock twenty two. And when I was carrying my Glock 22, this is what I carried it in all the time. I always carried it in this holster. And then when I traded my Glock 22 in for my M&P, I realized that it fits just as good as the Glock 22. So I used this for years, and I still use it sometimes. When I'm in a hurry, I'll just put it in the stone go and put it wherever I want it to go, all right? So these are another decent quality holsters, all right? Then we'll go a step up. You can go online and you can get holsters like this. It's like an alien gear holster, all right? It's custom Kydex. It's actually, actually they call this what, Zoltan or whatever it is. It's basically Kydex. It's rigid, heavy duty. It'll get the job done and it's got a leather inside. Some of them have neoprene or stuff, stuff like that. So it's going to be decent on your body and kind of comfortable on your body. But these hybrid holsters kind of support the weight of the pistol a little bit better and it makes it more a little more comfortable to carry. All right, so that's another way you could go. Then you could always go the over-the-counter expensive way like I did when I first got my M&P, which was this Galco. This is a Galco holster specifically designed for M&P full-size and compacts, as you can see. Now, I first got this, and I kind of liked it when I first got it because it had a nice little cant on it to my body when I was holding it at 9 o'clock. I had the loops. I like loops, but I started getting a little uncomfortable with it because this, yep, trigger can be touched very easily through it. Now, your belt is going to be over this, so for the most part, you're not going to be able to get to it. But after a while, I'm like, you know what? I'm not a huge fan of this holster. I put, you know, this was like a $100 holster. No joke. This was a freaking $105 holster when I bought it. Galco over the counter. I think I got it at Cabela's, all right? And one thing I don't like about leather is it's a little rougher when you're pulling the pistol out of it, all right? So it's a little bit rougher. So when you go to, like, Kydex, all right, it just slides in, pulls out, slides in, pull out. Or, like, the Blackhawk that I'm carrying right now, specifically designed for it, slides in, clicks, doesn't come out. All right, that's another good way to go. This is another affordable way to go, a $20 holster. I'm actually still testing this at uh, the end of the week. I'll have the full test on it, all right? So that is the holster part. You need a decent quality holster specifically designed for the model of your pistol or so it fits the pistol and covers the pistol, the trigger perfectly, all right? You want the trigger to be covered, all right? First step, get a decent belt. Second step, get a good holster. Now, when it comes to concealed carry a full-size pistol, one of the toughest parts is clothing, all right? Unfortunately, because the few extra inches or inch or so on either side of a full-size pistol, your pistol will stand out a lot more when you're carrying it, all right? So if you're going to be carrying a full-size pistol, you're probably going to have to adjust your clothing to carry. Now, I tell people when they first get a pistol, I usually recommend if they're going to be concealed carry, go to compact or subcompact because it's a lot easier to conceal. And what I tell them is get a pistol that you can fit into your clothing and not have to get clothing that you have to fit into your pistol. But when it comes to full-size pistols, if you want to carry a full-size pistol or if by company policy, like I said, if you're a law enforcement officer and you have to carry off-duty your service pistol, so... If you're going to be carrying a full-size pistol, you're probably wanting to do something a little bit different with your clothing. 
Now, say if you go out with a custom fit, nice t-shirt that you absolutely love and it's a little tight and stuff like that, you're walking around, the big old length of the pistol grip is going to be sticking out and they'll have a clear shape of the pistol, all right? If you're going to be going out wearing light color clothing, like white clothing or whatnot, there will be shadows casted on the shape of the pistol, whether it's the frame or the pistol grip, so that is going to make the pistol stand out. Now, keep in mind, most of the time the public doesn't give a damn and they're not even looking for a pistol they don't even look for it all right but in light color clothing or tight fitting clothing it's going to stand out and people are going to know it's a gun so my tip for that is wear dark colored clothing that isn't quite tight all right but ain't super loose either all right because you don't want to walk around with a baggy shirt where it looks like you're wearing a garbage bag right you want to wear something that looks normal you want to blend into society believe it or not guys there is actually an issue when it comes to concealed carry and t-shirts all right because a lot of name, big name companies out there the shirts that they make are either a little too shirt short on the waist or they're a little too tight on the waist all right so you want to find a shirt that is slightly longer than your average that type of t-shirt and maybe a little bit wider on the on, on the waist all right wherever you're carrying strong side appendix wherever it is you're going to want a little bit more play around the waist when it comes to clothing. When it comes to pants, you can't go out wearing skinny jeans. <laughs> All right, it's just not gonna work, guys. You need to buy pants, believe it or not, unfortunately, you have to buy pants about one size, maybe two sizes, bigger than your body, all right? The reason behind that is because, say if you're carrying strong side, the thickness of the pistol is going to add that inch or so to it. Like, I'll show it real quick. This is my M&P. It's going to add about an inch that's what I'm going to say. I don't have a tape measure to measure it right now. It's going to add about an inch to your waist. So if you wear regular jeans that fit you normally and just fit you just right and you try to put the pistol on, you're going to have a hard time buttoning the button and it's going to be very uncomfortable because it's going to be shoving it up against your body. So you're going to want to find, like I said, pants that are either one to two sizes a little bit big around the waist for you. All right? There it is. Those are my three main tips for concealed carrying a full-size firearm tip number one get a heavy-duty belt that can hold the weight of the pistol so you don't have to cinch down the belt and sing soprano at the opera all right step two get a holster that is designed specifically for your model or your model fits in it and it covers the trigger guard all right and number three adjust your clothing to it when it comes to the full-size firearm Unfortunately, you are going to have to adjust your clothing to the firearm to get it to conceal the best way it can possibly conceal, guys. It, it just is what it is, guys. If you go to like compact or subcompact, it's going to be a lot easier to go out in a t-shirt and shorts. If you're wearing a full size, you're probably going to want to go with something a little bit bigger, you know what I mean? So anyway, there they are, guys. So if you like this video, like, share, subscribe, tell your friends about me. And remember, guys, it's our responsibility to take care of each other and protect each other. Peace. And always, always carry your firearm.